Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Hello, my name is Jessica Leineweaver. I'm the director of the Center for Latin American and Caribbean Studies here at Brown. And here in the center, we have a program of visiting, uh, visiting professors. It's the COGIT Visiting Professors from Latin America. And so this year, we have two visiting professors with us. And one of them is who we're going to hear from today. The other one is Irma Gonzalez or Velasquez, and she'll be speaking later this month, so or in November. So I look, I hope that you'll be able to come to her talk as well. It is going to be about Guatemala. Um, Jean Segata is who I'll be introducing today. He is a professor of anthropology and public policies at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul in Porto Alegre, Brazil. He teaches there on cyberculture, human-animal relations, and environmental policies. He's also teaching while he's here at Brown. He's giving us a course, a seminar, um, every Thursday, correct, uh, at 4 o'clock, which you're welcome to enroll in, and that is on the mosquito. So what you'll hear about today is a preview of what he teaches um, during the semester. Uh, Professor Segata holds an undergraduate degree in psychology from the University for the Development of Alto Valle do Itajai, which is Unidavi in Rio de Sul, Brazil. He also has a Master's of Science and a PhD degree in Social Anthropology from the Federal University of Santa Catarina in Florianopolis. His research has examined a wide variety of things. He's looked at new digital technologies by doing ethnographic studies in a computer lab and on the social networking site Orkut. He's also done an ethnographic study of how medical technologies flow between humans and animals. And specifically, he's been looking at the diagnostics and treatments of um, dogs for psychiatric conditions. Uh, most recently, he's been researching public policies based on modeling softwares and DNA viral analyses to control sanitary emergencies related to the, I don't know how to say it, Jean, but the Aedes aegypti uh, mosquito, he will teach us, um, in Brazil and Argentina. And that work, that research, is the basis of his talk to us today. Please join me in welcoming Professor Segata. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to be here um, at Brown. Uh, I'm grateful to Jessica Lane Viver. Kate Goldman, Erica Durant, and to everyone for Clax and Watson Institute uh, for the invitation and hospitality. Obrigado. <laughs> I'm Jean Segata, Brazilian anthropologist. And since 2015, I've been following mosquitoes, doing a field work in three different places uh, Natal, in Northwest, in Northwest Brazil, uh, in Porto Alegre, in the south of the country and more recently in Buenos Aires, Argentina. In these three cities, I'm um, researching programs that are part of public health policies for surveillance and control of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. For more than a century, uh, this mosquito has been constructed as one of the main vectors of diseases, of tropical diseases, like yellow fever, dengue, Zika, and chikungunya. And in addition, to its fame as a villain and enemy. Uh, this makes it a catalyst of political interests of, uh, and a global infrastructure of science. Local mosquitoes control programs have aligned to interests of global health and its recent tendency to transform healthcare into a matter of biosecurity. Therefore, uh, particular experiences uh, have been adjusted to international parameters uh, defined by, by World Health Organization specialists, uh, but also to understanding of peer reviewers of nature and some wills of stakeholders of chemical companies and creditors of the World Bank Group. But it's also true that doing anthropology with mosquitoes uh, has become an exercise in mapping heterogeneous and unequal meetings and of the formation of a new contingent arrangements of culture and power. In other words, uh, the global connections meet local resistance. There is friction to use an intriguing concept of anything. My objective in this presentation is to show you a bit of the life in these places of friction. In them, Epidemics are performed and convert in tools of governability, at times this fashion well, but also these policies have everything needed to go wrong. 
and I will emphasize with it. Um, Well, there are uh, geographical, cultural, and socioeconomic differences that impact the life of the people and of mosquitoes in these three cities. Uh, the fieldwork allows plunging into a complex wealth of details, but the time of this presentation doesn't. So, um, in Argentina, I need to explain it. Uh, I'm doing my research with the Sandy and Liz. This is a national center for diagnostics and researches about epidemics and endemics. My colleagues there ask me for express, for express uh, their repudiation about the end of the Ministry of Health in Argentina last week, uh, decreed by President Macri. Um, Sandia Liz is responsible for more than 2,000 municipalities of the 24 provinces in Argentina and also with the countries of the region. They work with dengue, Zika, chikungunya, yellow fever, but also malaria, chagas, leishmaniasis, allergies, poisons, and several other diseases. They analyze the results and advise national municipalities and programs, but also patients on prevention and treatment strategies. In the case of epidemics or pandemics, the Minister of Health uh, of the nation in Argentina coordinates public health policies, control measures, and actions to apply in the municipalities or region affected to ensure that the disease don't, doesn't extend. That is the sense of the research. Uh, and the end of the Minister of Health uh, of the nation there is no more uh, public health in Argentina. So in respect to them, and in face of the problems that are happening there, I'd like to make a special presentation about Argentina on another time, um, if uh, Clax uh, allow me, yeah. So today I will concentrate me in cases on Brazil, and my option will be to highlight some ethnographic uh, situations that combine the work with mosquitoes and new digital technologies. My presentation will talk about 40 minutes, and I will and I organize it to, in two moments. In the first, I will speak about the modeling and geolocalization software used to surveil and control the presence of mosquitoes in Brazil, uh, especially in Natal. And the second moment, I will describe the use of mosquitoes and DNA technologies to hunt viruses in Porto Alegre. Finally, I will make a brief consideration by articulating questions about science, cyberculture, and animal relation uh, related to epidemics. Well, Natal and the digital mosquito. Here, everything is digital, even the mosquitoes. This is how Lucas told me about Vigia Dengue, uh, the new dengue control program in Natal. The community health care worker for epidemics or endemics, so-called mosquitoes workers, uh, gave me uh, some maps and began to show me where the mosquitoes were. Look, he said, the map changed each week. It all depends on numbers. We are in the command. Potential, potential areas of risk are highlighted on the map by colored circles. They are shaped by the combination of entomological and epidemiological data processed by computers in the center of zoonosis control. The entomological data refer to the number of the mosquitoes egg, eggs gathered in the traps spread through the municipality. The epidemiological data are based uh, on the cases of patients who are notified by the healthcare services that they are suspect or confirmed to have dengue. On a chromatic scale uh, that range from white to red, uh, passing through yellow and orange, the computer defines the danger and produces the zones of risk on a midpoint between eggs and ill people. Based on mosquito ecology, the circles has a diameter of uh, 500 meters and those in head are converted into combat zones. And then, the mosquitoes workers must do housekeeping, the local term they use to summarize the protocolary uh, <coughs> actions of the Ministry of Health. To fight dengue in Natal meant 
to kill mosquitoes inside the house or private prop properties. This, the mosquitoes workers must visit all the residences in the red circle, check for the presence of breeding places, and eliminate them with pesticide. And there are always a lot of red circles in the map. Brazilian guide guidelines determine, determine that each community healthcare worker for endemics must be responsible for doing 100 houses per week, that is, 20 per day. So, reaching the goal becomes a slogan and static of the teams that go out under the scalding sun of the Brazilian artist hunting mosquitoes. The mosquitoes worker who find the most location of breeding sites or mosquitoes in special or exotic places, as in the case of abandoned policy cars, is parking competitions among each other. In addition to the reports required of them, the workers take pictures of the most critical situations with then smartphones. These photos circulate as a type of hunting prize on WhatsApp groups of the workers and also are annexed to the official program reports. The Vigit Dengue program is announced uh, as being revolutionary and the city government is required to demonstrate its effectiveness to justify the high operation costing. Therefore, the numbers and the photos help to perform the epidemic. For the administrators of public policy, doing housekeeping is essential more for the quantity of information than the work of prevention and control that they propose to care for. The use of software in the public policy creates a sensation of ubiquity and effectiveness. This echoes uh, the technocratic fantasies in real time that become a trend in healthcare inspection based on the use of new digital technology. It supports the belief that the identification and control of risk would take place with the speed and precision of the computer. The Vigia Dengue was implemented in late uh, 2015 and received at uh, the beginning praise in local media. They emphasized the use of digital technology and said that the city was armed against the mosquito. But some mosquitoes workers see the situation a bit differently. As, some, uh, as someone told me, you can invent whatever you want, but works with mosquitoes is hellish. In fact, the Vigia Deng had some problems, and I will speak about three of them. The mosquito must be described. Vigia Dengue, I'm sorry. Okay. Vigia Dengue promised the use of uh, a specific app, app to would help all people to hunt mosquitoes. Uh, it would allow uh, photographing the breeding sites and send them directly to the program's database. Uh, the application would conduct a, a geolocalization, but this never takes place. Uh, the experts and political authorities allowed difficult in administrating data in real time. They said that people would send photos of any mosquito and this would produce false positives. But Lucas had another explanation. For him, if the population would truly engage and would send photos, there wouldn't be enough space on the map to mark all the problems in the city. Moreover, according to Lucas, the mosquito also need to collaborate in the maintenance of the program. It shouldn't appear so much, he said. Its complete elimination would mean the extinction of the policy for its control and all infrastructure that it required. Carlos also told me this when I questioned an action that involved cleansing of uh, an upper middle class area in April uh, 2016. Uh, the software didn't cover that area, but a Vigia Deng director told them to go there and conduct a complete cleansing. Uh, finally, they made a barrier with pesticides at the border of a poor community called My Luisa, uh, hidden behind the condominiums. Uh, Carlos told me that the mosquito came from there, but now, uh, they were protected in the condos. So I asked what they 
did in the poor community, and he said, in reality, nothing. The people from here complained, and the director asked us to go. But it was an exception. The norm is to work in the more complicated regions of the Zone North, where the computer town is to go. But now it's ready. Uh, with this Bahir, I doubt that the mosquito will return. There, in my Luisa, the mosquito is a home. Moreover, we need to save the mosquitoes a bit. You know, you can kill everything. You realize uh, how it's bad this year, no rain, and the summer is over, and the mosquitoes hardly appear. So it's difficult. Everyone has to do their part. The mosquito must collaborate with us. If it does appear, the money does appear too. And you know, without money, all of this can be maintained. The mosquito is a gold mine, and each epidemic is a blank check. Second, problems with data. Accompanying the workers, workers, it's uh, very common to find ill people who opt to not seek medical services. They complain about delays in care and the lack of treatment, so they save the time and discomfort of long lines and would go directly to the pharmacist to medicate themselves against the symptoms such as fever and pain. I even found a dengue kit uh, sold for 50 reals, about uh, $12 today at the pharmacy. With constant underreporting, the software operates with inconsistent data. Without the correct data about the epidemiology, the geolocalization of risk inclined uh, to the direction of the mosquito eggs, and new problems appeared. As a part of the protocol, the eggs aren't counted uh, or analyzed. Uh, according to the scientific, uh, scientific models, the number of eggs and consequently of mosquitoes is estimated, and from this it's induced that 90% uh, of total are at the Egypt mosquitoes. The inconsistency could, uh, could then have consequences because the eggs could be from other mosquitoes or even of health populations. The point is the, the modeling done by the technology doesn't account uh, for the particularities of the practice of the human and mosquito population. After all, people and mosquitoes don't always function uh, like a binary codes. Thus, a global digital infrastructure operates a local public policy with a strong distance between the reality calculated and the reality lived. The digital tools produce a modeling of risk based in the power of statistical improbability, but didn't compute the particular experiences. Third, the moral economy of the mosquito. Before Vigia Deng, there was a smaller contingent of workers, and they worked in fixed zones in a scheme called uh, cyclo routine. According to the criticism, many of them uh, become responsible with the work because of the cleanliness competition and an excess of familiarity. They work in the same zones that they lived in were accused of shutting, having cough, or, and doing that they call the Pencil Point House. Pencil Point House is a local category of accusation that refers to filling out protocolary visit forms without conducting the necessary visits, surveys, and controls. According to what workers told me, some didn't even make the visit and only filled uh, in the papers, so uh, there were no real data about the infestation. The question is that in Vigia Deng, the worker who finds more critical situations stand out, but in the, previous, in the previous program, the moral distinction was forged by their cap capacity to keep their zone clean. So a pencil point house, therefore, tend to present a little or no presence of mosquitoes in the reports. This creates a false negative, and even worse, uh, didn't help to renovate the budgets because the authorities weren't able to convince the federal government that, were, that was still mosquito to be fought. 
uh, with the Vigia Deng, the workers come to act in a format that recalled early 20th uh, century campaigns. They need to go to the zoonosis centers where they would check the point of the infestation and only they could they go, go out to the zone of combat uh, determined by the software. Sometimes the bus ride took more than two hours. Other, uh, the bus didn't appear for those who lived in the periphery. Uh, since they spent the day in the place where they worked, they didn't eat at home and were uh, forced to take their breaks in the street under a tree for protection from the sun. In most cases, they didn't uh, take breaks or even need a meal because they hurried to reach the goal early and go home in attempt to save their benefits or to do some informal job in their spare time to earn extra money. In addition, they deal with quite complex situations, such as the refusal to be received by the population because of fear that they are thieves. After all, in the new program, they don't work in the neighborhood where they live. Look, Lucas explained me. You have to go to house, uh, to house and hunt the mosquitoes. At times, uh, there are people who don't like it and don't let it in. Others uh, want to fight. Uh, others want to fight. They want to know who talk about their lives and become furious because they think that uh, we are accusing them of being the owners of the mosquito. People are collecting recyclables or keep water in a bucket because there is none at the faucet. And of course, there are mosquitoes. But we know how is it. Uh, they are just living their lives, uh, but they think uh, we are persecuting them, uh, that uh, we think they are dirty and guilty. It leads to a lot of fights, mainly between neighborhoods who don't trust uh, each other. I don't get involved. I don't want to take a bullet, which has happened. It's not easy to work with mosquitoes. So. Uh, the presence of the workers caused cause, uh, hard discomfort. When the software told them to go somewhere, uh, they went. But uh, to receive a visit from a worker in the neighborhood or at home was to be seen as a contaminator. And for this reason, conflicts are common. Fights take place about the responsibility for the mosquitoes, and they almost always become violent. Expressions like the neighborhood's mosquitoes or so-and-so's mosquitoes denote that uh, the problem has an owner, an address, and it is only necessary to look within the red balls in the map. Moreover, uh, the software makes the suffering of the workers invisible. The only protection that they receive is to become contaminated. After becoming ill, uh, the workers become immune. All of those who I had contact with uh, had already contract dengue, Zika, or chikungunya. At times, they laugh uh, at my concern about using protection, but becoming new is also a, is also a way of getting revenge on the administrators who stumbly don't provide protective work equipment. The workers don't receive repellent, appropriate clothes, or even sunblock. The chemical products are also handled without gloves or any protection. And the very idea that they are applying remedinho, literally a little remedy in the water tanks, is a perverse way to translate to the semantics of healthcare the massive use of the pesticides uh, that the policy requires them to undertake. In other terms, the naturalization of work takes place in the shadow of the software. The second part is hunting the virus in Porto Alegre. It's Friday, and it's in the sector of vectors in rodents of the Department of Health of Porto Alegre. 
while we spoke about the weather, the drop in the number of the mosquitoes, and uncertainty about the renovation of the contract uh, with the company that conduct uh, DNA exams, the telephone ring, Ligia answered. After some time in silence, she checked uh, the maps on the computer and responds. You don't have to worry, ma'am. I don't know. Uh, I know that uh, there are mosquitoes there on your street. I can see that. We monitor everything. Things, are, have, uh, things have changed now. It's not like in the past when they would go to the houses, apply pesticides, kill mosquitoes. So don't worry. They don't have the virus. They aren't diseased. Uh, they are healthy. You can live with the mosquitoes. Not all of them are bad for you. The biologist uh, shook her head and complained. She then hung up the, the phone and told us conclusively, it's not easy to work with people. She tried to explain that she monitored the presence of the virus in the city, but the resident who called had difficult believing and say that they weren't concerned with her complaint. In reality, to find the virus isn't an easy task, particularly outdoors and out of a big city. You must learn some process and count of many mediators in collaborative work. I will summarize you describing a weekly work. It's Monday and begin quite early. Uh, the high driver stopped close the municipal health clinic. While uh, he confirmed the itinerary on a large map with notations, Alice, a mosquito worker from Porto Alegre, tells us uh, to go to, to not get out of the car with a lot of things because we are in a community described as dangerous. The clinic operates in a small and poorly cared for house uh, that was handed and adapted by the Porto Alegre Municipal Government. The identification vests uh, help uh, open doors. Alice goes ahead and warns uh, that we would give a peek at the mosquitoes. We walk around the line of those waiting for medical care and go straight to the back of the house. In a room used as a service area, we find the first trap of the day. Uh, hung on an iron grate protecting the window uh, next uh, to clothes basin. In a towel, the traps caught eggs in Porto Alegre, adult mosquitoes. Alice's instructions is to begin with the check-in, uh, to then open the trap, check the card, and clean the trap. She, posi she positioned uh, the smartphone camera in front of the key, uh, QR code. Uh, the phone is a part of equipment uh, issued by the company contracted. But it takes her a uh, few tries to be able to make uh, the reading. Uh, the worker blames the rain, which ruined the code and interfering with the reading. But when it uh, finally works, the system recognizes the position of trap on the map by means of the GPS coordinates. When we open the recipient, Alice can't hold back a smile. Look how lucky we have mosquitoes. And look, I think we have more than five. That's wonderful. I share uh, Alice's joy, but I can't identify very much. Uh, the Aedes aegypti is a small mosquito, and when it tried to get free from the glue, uh, it normally loses its wings and legs, which uh, stick to the cord. In addition, the trap captures other, other mosquitoes, as well as pollen, ants, bees, uh, moats, salamanders, crickets, spiders, and even uh, small toads. For a beginner, this makes it more difficult. After the shaking, each mosquito was reported in the, uh, uh, in the app. Uh, the counting include Aedes aegypti, Aedes albopictus, and Culex, but only the first two are collected. To remove them from the card, uh, we use a toothpick. 
in some cases, it's necessary to give a little squish uh, because they are still alive. The mosquitoes usually wind up in pieces. For each reason, it's necessary to take care to get the head and as much as possible of its body. Alicia explained that that's where uh, the treasure uh, is, is hidden. The worker was referring to DNA, which contained the information about the condition of the mosquito as health or positive for some virus. The mosquitoes collect from the trap are stored in a test tub with a chemical solution that preserves the nucleic uh, acid, uh, so uh, it could be analyzed. Each one of these small recipients has a number and a barcode that identifies uh, identify it and associate it uh, to the place of collection. Terminating this step, the trap is washed uh, so that no eggs remain in the corners, which can convert the equipment into a mosquito breeder. Alicia completes the first trap of the day. Under her responsibility, there, are, uh, there must be about 100 more waiting to be checked until Wednesday. Each week, she and her colleagues must take care of more than uh, 1,200 traps in a territory of uh, 42 of the 84 uh, neighborhoods in, of Porto Alegre. On Thursday, Alice takes the small tubs with the mosquitoes to the program's main man office. There, Carla checks the delivery to avoid errors and fraud. Uh, this is because be because Porto Alegre also has its version of pencil point houses. Yeah, uh, there are many stories of workers who photograph and print the code of the traps and then uh, do the checking at 10 homes. On Friday, uh, the mosquitoes are mailed to Belo Horizonte where they are analyzed with RT-PCR technology. In the laboratory, the mosquitoes are placed in a centrifuge uh, their RNA is extracted and the viral genomes amplified. When a virus is detected, the company communicates uh, just to the Department of Health. Uh, the DNA never lies, explained uh, to me in our conversation. Uh, with it, tables, graphs, and a dynamic, uh, dynamic map about the presence of the virus perform a set of indexes that promise to predict an epidemic. Uh, so, uh, as example of the traps in Porto Alegre. Yeah. Um, this process uh, is repeated every week. There is much to say about it, but what I'd like to highlight today is related to the change in the relationship with the Aedes aegypti in Porto Alegre. Uh, you know, geolocalization of uh, confirmed patients in Porto Alegre. Yeah, it's here. Um. The mosquito is the most sophisticated uh, of the technologies invented by tropical medicine. With it, epidemics take place. Since uh, 1902, when the commission led uh, by what Walter Reed accepted the mosquito hypothesis formulated years early by Cuban doctor Carlos Finlay, the Aedes aegypti became an enemy and also an infrastructure of science. The Rockefeller Foundation established an international standard known as the Mosquito Index that was related to a dangerous urban lifestyle as a synanthropic uh, species. Since then, the measurement of the effectiveness of healthcare programs was based on linking the mosquito habitat and the human habits. That is, efficient control of the Aedes aegypti should therefore also involve joint monitoring of humans. Moreover, these mosquito-centric policies were constructed with a reasoning on a scientific scale. The virus that the mosquitoes carry are, uh, carry are invisible to the naked eye. The question is related to the thickness of the measurement needed to make an anti-divisible and manipulable, wrote uh, Elena Luvi. 
Historically, public policies opt for eliminate the mosquitoes. But now Porto Alegre has made it an instrument to hunt virus. It reflects a recent trend in science that use other beings as sentinels to support biosecurity. The concerns over sick, monkey, uh, over sick monkey, monkeys, monkeys, I'm sorry, monkeys, the observation of behavior, behavioral changes in birds, uh, but also problems with plants and marine creatures uh, have provided alerts about uh, possible pandemics, environmental disasters, or climate change. But the strain is also reflected in anthropology. Sanitary crises facilitate, uh, facilitate the understanding of strategies for the government of human and animal populations. Epidemics of avian and swine flu, medical diseases, leishmaniasis, or problems with so-called invasive species determine uh, the scope of the political, moral, and epistemological debate that involves animal, human health, and their infrastructures and environments. In chart, the mosquitoes in Porto Alegre becomes work companions. This is, this is very interesting for politics as well for anthropology. I just know, I just don't know if this compulsory altruism was adventurous to the mosquitoes. After all, some get stuck to the glow, are crushed, centrifuge, and wind up as genetical material on a microscopic slide. So final consideration. Um, I'd like to conclude with some brief considerations based on subculture, sci subculture science, and human-animal relations. Through these presentations, I sought to show how the lives, uh, lives of mosquitoes and people intersect and are produced and locally governed by means of global technologies. For this reason, I emphasize the work guided by software the moralities construct around the geolocalization of risk areas and the truth uh, affirmed by mosquito genetics. Uh, this situation helps us to perceive the invisible and silent action of the new digital technologies and public policies. With the ground of uh, internet and its devices, the notion of cyberculture in anthropology has gained visibility associated to use of the social media and its <laughs> possibilities uh, for activism. Nevertheless, the formula elaborated 25 years ago by Artur Escobar articulated technosociality and biosociality. For Escobar, cyberculture was the expression of the process of sociocultural uh, construction associated to the technologies of computing and information and their implications for the production of life, nature, and the body. Although computers and genetic are contemporary, uh, digital technologies and technologies of life are usually distributed in distant fields in our analysis. My interest here was to show that binary codes and DNA travel together. Digita digitalization and genetization are forms of molecularizing and squelching relations. Uh, the intensification of this digital and genetic infrastructure remodel remodels different aspects of daily life, including work, sociability, or the understanding uh, that we have about uh, private and public situations. But it's also important to recognize that they act in the same exclusionary circles now for more than a century in the universe of epidemics. In both Natal and Porto Alegre, the traps to capture eggs or adult mosquito are positioned in poor regions. In this way, the geolocalization of the breeding sites of the epidemics support the maintenance of production of moral peripheries. By producing maps uh, with colored circles that indicate degrees of risks, the technology transfers uh, to the population of people and mosquitoes the responsibility for the problems that are, in reality, of a structural nature in the municipality. In Porto Alegre, for example, the municipality has implemented one of the most innovate, innovative uh, policies in the country. 
It conducts a viral vigilance using mosquito DNA. This high technology is encanting, but it contrasts drastically with the idea that in, in one of the Brazilian capitals with the high deaths per capita incomes, 44% of the population doesn't have basic sanitation. That is, it has PCR for the mosquitoes, but it doesn't have the most basic technology of the public health policy, which consists of two pipes, one to deliver safe water, and other to the effluents. Another point to consider in this road is that uh, of the belief in the neutrality of science and technological artifacts. Everyone knows uh, that even before the mosquito, theories of miasmas and contagion support uh, hygienist policies in Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, in, Brazil, in Brazil, for example, the sanitary policies led to the destruction of cortisos, uh, tenant buildings, persecute the poor, and expelled black lives from the center of the cities under the accusation that they were dirty and dangerous. The pastoral uh, theories led Osvaldo Cruz and his campaigns to uh, forcibly vaccinate the population and invade their homes to apply pesticides. The scientific, uh, the scientific theories also support Rockefeller Foundation project to collect samples of the livers uh, of the ill and spread pesticides through nearly the entire continent under the pretense of a desire to eradicate an entire species of mosquito. Um, public healthcare policies are a type of uh, laboratory experiment extended through the world. Political and corporate decision, but also those of uh, specialists are guided much more by theoretical and methodological choice that refer to techno-scientific fields than to more dense analysis, analysis of the particularities of local environments, knowledge, practice, and experiences. Nevertheless, uh, as I wanted to uh, emphasize, the surface aren't so smooth. To a large degree, it's the mundane elements of daily experience that mediate the impact of the globalized technologies. As I show you, uh, people don't go to the doctor, and the epidemiological data is underreported. The application doesn't function. function. The workers do pencil point houses. Sometimes it rains just a little, the eggs don't hatch, and the mosquitoes don't appear. Other times it rains too much, and this ruins the QR code on the traps. This is the friction places. Through then, flu suffering, but also life and resistance. Finally, the mosquito also resists. They are a type of authority like the mushrooms described by Annette Sink that warn us that we aren't always in control. The mosquitoes uh, live at the margin. They always return. Uh, they cannot be totally subordinated. To be even more optimistic, thinking of yellow fever that killed the Europeans that arrived in the warm sands uh, of Latin America and the Caribbean, the mosquitoes uh, were even a bit anti-colonialist. Today, uh, they don't appear when they are needed. Uh, they challenge the maintenance of public policies. They resist the pesticide industry and the imperialism of global health. They hide from the software and challenge the military intelligence of biosecurity. So, mosquitoes are our tropical unconscious. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Ask you to take some questions and please feel free to feel your own. Okay. Uh, wonderful talk, and I, I think you began it from a hot piece of news about Argentina, which uh, indicates that public health is political. And it depends on who's in power as to what kind of policies are going to be carried out. So, those of us who know a little of Brazilian history know that in 1906, was 1906, the revolt of the vaccine. In was a response to the government penetrating people's homes and forcibly vaccinating people, etc. 
Um, I'm curious to know if you can distinguish a talk a relationship between the kinds of governments in power and the policies and people's response to the government in their homes. In other words, can you see a difference between different kinds of governments and the response to public health workers helping people or being an enemy of people? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll try to answer it in English, but I, sometimes I, it's hard for me. But uh, there is a, a, a hard difference between uh, Brazil and Argentina in the case of public policies uh, related to Aedes aegypti mosquito. Uh, for me, the, the, the main of difference is the fact of in the Argentina, uh, the healthcare workers uh, doesn't allow to uh, enter uh, in the houses, to enter in the, uh, the private spaces. And in Brazil, it's, uh, uh, um, it's the other way. Uh, it's, uh, the, the, it's normally uh, that the workers uh, enter in, at homes and do the housekeeping, uh, use the pesticides and other things. In Argentina, um, I, I remember a situation that I, I talking about uh, this, this kind of practice in Brazil, and people there uh, said to me, uh, the government enter in your house? No, uh, only the healthcare workers. But the healthcare workers is the government. You uh, can't recognize the state, or you can recognize the government uh, without uniform uh, as a policy and other things. But this is a government too, and you uh, mustn't uh, to to allow the, uh, these people enter in your private uh, spaces. And I think uh, in the Brazil, between the different governments in Brazil, do you think that the PT or the Bez de Bay or another party, is there a feeling that the specific government in power has a different kind of right, or, or do people trust one kind of government over another to go into the house? Yeah. Um, uh, since uh, uh, Zika virus in, in Brazil, uh, the uh, the government uh, it's allowed to enter in the in the house, and uh, if uh, the the if the people aren't uh, house, uh, the the agent uh, of the healthcare uh, it's allowed to enter uh, uh, without um, invitation, and if the people resist, né, uh, the 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 worker. Uh, so uh, can call the policy and to enter in the house. It's, a, it's very hard, this situation in, in, in Brazil, yeah. But um, I don't know, there is a, 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 a lot of uh, stories about it, but um, I'm thinking about uh, the, I don't know, the archetype of the epidemics in Brazil and Argentina. Because in Argentina, uh, the, the most uh, uh, part of the yellow fever um, epidemics, or the biggest uh, yellow fever epidemics in uh, 19th century uh, uh, was placed in a cemetery. Yeah, because uh, the water uh, in the flower vases, yeah. And in Brazil, uh, uh, the, 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 the epidemics was placed in the cortices and, and the, uh, yeah, especially in the cortices. So uh, I, I'm thinking about uh, this archetype uh, because uh, in Argentina, epidemics is a public space problem. And in Brazil, the epidemics, uh, uh, yellow fever, Zika, and other things. It's a uh, private. Né? So uh, the government um, consider uh, themselves uh, allowed to, to, to intercept people in uh, a home. Yeah. And Thank you very much for your talk. Um, I wanted to know a little bit more about the relationship 
today in Brazil between health or, and development, or economic health and, and human health? Because it seemed like in these two cases, in, in Natal, the production of data about mosquitoes was a way of capturing state resources. So data was the industry. And in Porto Alegre, it seems like something similar is going on. It's about producing data. Yeah. Um, and in that case, a private company is contracted in making money, presumably, to do this. So I'm wondering, with the rise of cyber culture, how has that changed the way that people think about the relationship between stopping epidemics and, say, urban development, inequality, those other things that in the era of the Rockefeller Foundation and Oswaldo Cruz were sort of the stuff of, of mosquito prevention. Yeah. Um, thank you, Alex. Um, I remember one of the most um, unbelievable talk with the coordinator of the public policy in Natal. Uh, they ask for the number of the people ill, uh, and they ask uh, about the number of tourists in the city. Why tourists? Because Natal basically uh, depends of the tourism, yeah. And uh, a secretary of tourism uh, bring the numbers of the the, the, the hotels uh, and uh, the fly uh, the, the, the the flights and uh, about the tourism, and they calculate uh, which uh, is more uh, profit. Yeah, announced an epidemic and receive of the federal government uh, the budget of the epidemic or uh, don't <laughs> announce the epidemic and, and continue uh, using the tourist profits. Yeah, uh, they use a calculator. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, uh, to compare the situation. So because uh, if uh, they announced uh, the epidemics, uh, the, some flights are canceled uh, and other uh, tourists, uh, oh, I don't know if I go to Natal and something. And no, um, they prefer um, continues with the tourism, yeah. So in Natal, Natal is close to Paraíba and uh, Pernambuco, Bahia, the states of uh, our world. Uh, the, must be a, a number of the cases of Zika virus, for example. But Natal uh, don, did have the epidemic of Zika. <laughs> yeah, did have because, uh, yeah, the, the tourism. And in Porto Alegre, there is another situation. Uh, the politics is efficient. Yeah, really. And uh, uh, last, uh, last year, uh, there was two uh, cases of ill people with dengue only. So uh, the administration of the municipality thinking and uh, do not continue with the politics because it's right, all right now, yeah. This is the uh, chronic problem uh, in Brazil, yeah. Uh, after the Rockefeller uh, mission in Brazil, they interrupt the programs and the dank uh, came. Uh, the Carlos uh, that I told you uh, today uh, work uh, 30 years with emergence, with mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now uh, he was retired. Yeah. Uh, I do. Uh, I did my uh, my life with the mosquitoes, but with the emergence, uh, but uh, 30 years in emergence, constantly emergence. Yeah, this is, uh, it, here, um, it's interesting in this picture, uh, the green uh, points, uh, no mosquitoes, yeah, uh, yellow and orange, 
one or two mosquitoes, but uh, never, uh, never is never the map is clean, yeah. Ever uh, show uh, uh, maybe one mosquito appear there or there or there constantly uh, sensation of um, I don't know I'm prepared like a yeah like a Andrew lack of work talk so uh, this is. Um, this is tragic in, in, in Brazil. The health uh, uh, economics and the health of health uh, need to, 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 to walk in together. Yeah. And uh, here in this, uh, in this uh, slide is uh, another interesting thing. Uh, here. Uh, Bella Vista, Montserrat, and Moinhos de Vento, Benito, <laughs> uh, live in Porto Alegre too, yeah. Uh, this is the most uh, richest area of Porto Alegre. Uh, <laughs> not uh, didn't mosquito, no, no, uh, not didn't traps there, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't know. It, uh, there is a, a interesting data about it. Yeah, uh, there are people ill with dengue and Zika live here, not here when the mosquito take place, because people here uh, have money to travel to northwest to take. Uh, uh, your holidays in the beach and other things, and come back ill. But uh, but the official data uh, 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 intersect the mosquitoes and ill people. So interesting. But uh, there is an, another problem with uh, foreign. Yeah, because the foreign is. Uh, uh, is, is the problem. <laughs> the mosquito, the Brazilian mosquito is a problem to Argentina people. <laughs> and here uh, in Porto Alegre, uh, the, health, uh, the, 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 the healthcare workers said, our mosquitoes is, are healthy, but people uh, travel and uh, get used in contact with the ill mosquitoes. So no our mosquitoes, <laughs> the other mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, os nossos mosquitos são bons. Yeah, I know. role that digital technologies play for workers and for public health as an entity. I was curious if you could say how do they, is there any effect or any impact for the people whose homes are visited? So for example, I'm imagining does a, does a worker, a mosquito worker, show up and have the phone and say, look, see, it's on your, it's at your house. Does that produce some kind of sense of authority or is the digital aspect Mostly over in the, for, mostly for workers and not really present for the oh, owners okay. or the, the residents. Yeah, uh, in the case of uh, Natal, uh, this that is about the the presence of the mosquito uh, used uh, only by the workers. The population uh, uh, didn't know about it. But in Porto Alegre, this is a, a public website. Yeah, and people, uh, the workers in Porto Alegre uh, indicate people to to look in these areas and to check of the health of uh, your areas. Yes, it's to different situations, and uh, in the case of uh, Porto Alegre, people. Oh, uh, so, so, okay. Yeah. But in Natal, 
when the, the workers are in the area, uh, they show the, the graphics and the people who fight. It's so different. And, but in particular, it's another use of this technology. Yeah, when I arrived um, in Porto Alegre to, to live in Porto Alegre, uh, past uh, two years, uh, the broker uh, that uh, intends to uh, to offer a, a apartment for for rent uh, told me, "Oh, choose this area. <laughs> yeah, this is clean of mosquitoes." So this is a, a a part of the broker services to to sell uh, apartments and other things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the uh, um, non-thinking uses of the, the technology. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Hi, uh, I very much appreciated your presentation, and uh, I'm. In a way, about the the conflict between public health surveillance and the new technologies and the lives of the people and the workers, but at the same time, like especially during the emergency of, of Zika, the government was criticized a lot for not for the inaction, for not doing anything. So I don't know if you're familiar with other experiences of a more community-oriented or community-sensitive kind of public health surveillance. If there's a way to do public health surveillance and to prevent disease without being violent like broadly or, or anything like that? Yeah, uh, the Zika virus is a, um, um, it's an interesting case and totally differently of this case because, uh, I don't know, but the Zika virus opened another agenda of the debate uh, in Brazil because uh, the most uh, common uh, politics in Brazil about the Zika is to is the women culpabilization about the <laughs> the problems with Zika. Yeah, because one of the most known uh, the, the, the well known problem with the Zika is the the the, the, the kids with uh, uh, microcephaly. Yeah, and the Minister of Health uh, uh, said uh, two years ago. Uh, if you uh, if you uh, sorry uh, to stop the problem with the microcephaly, the the the, the women uh, need to stop the uh, get a, a, a engravidar. Yes, get pregnant. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, there is a culpabilization of the women, and especially poor uh, women, uh, black women. Uh, it's um, tragic. And uh, the most keto-centric policies in Brazil do not, com do not combine with the, the, the human rights. This is a... <laughs> uh, uh, to put all the... the the budget in to kill mosquitoes and do not attempt the reproductive uh, uh, rights of the sanitation and other things, it's um, a violence. It's a problem with our human rights in Brazil. It's so complicated case. Um, we'll be uh, here, uh, Deborah Diniz is, uh, will be talking about uh, Zika virus and women in November here, and uh, her work uh, described uh, uh, intensively this reality in Brazil. A, 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 a big uh, gap uh, between human rights and reproductive rights and the respect of the women and uh, public policies for health in the case of uh, Zika. So uh, the Minister of Health uh, officially said no, uh, Zika ends in Brazil. But uh, uh, like uh, Deborah Diniz said in uh, in a paper, uh, the epidemics uh, never end in the case because the kids are microcephaly, the people are illness, uh, 
And so it's complicated. Yeah. Two different situations too, yeah. Because uh, in Natal, I'm, I'm doing my my field work uh, with the workers, uh, the community workers, and not the administrators of the the public health. For anthropology, is uh, it's very interesting because the access in the field work was with the uh, workers. Yeah, and after this, I know the administrators and and the workers hate the administrators. <laughs> yeah, and show me all the all the problems and and critics the the new policies because the policies change uh, two and two years. Yeah, or four years. A new administrator, a new program. The Vigia Denke is a, a new problem, but Vigia Denke, uh, I'm sorry, I don't told you this. Uh, Vigia Denke ends because the corruption. Yeah, and a new program uh, start, uh, starting now. Yeah. Uh, in Porto Alegre, uh, was a different way from my field work. I, I've been uh, doing my field work with the administrators of the public health and not the workers in the on, on, on street yeah but uh, yeah sometimes uh, i accompany uh, the the workers but it's a totally different uh, setting because uh, the administrator uh, ask the worker oh jean will, jean will be accompanying you and show you and the workers are more protocolarily with me. Yeah, no, we need to, to do it and it and it. Yeah, <laughs> but in, in Natal, no, no, no protocolarity. No, no. Uh, uh, the policy said, uh, uh, ask us to, to do it, but we opt to do another thing. Yeah, it's so totally different, the, the situations. And in Argentina, uh, it's uh, another situation because uh, I, I was invited to work in Argentina with the Minister of, uh, the, the Minister of Health in a department. And uh, I remember my first, uh, my first time there uh, last year uh, when the uh, Minister of Health Introducing me for all people. This is an ex specialist from Brazil. Yeah, asking him for all the things about the mosquitoes. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, and uh, so in Argentina, uh, I'm doing my field work with the administrator, but not in the only the municipality, but uh, the national uh, administrators. Yeah doing a field work in Buenos Aires, but with uh, uh, the national administration. So three different kinds of um, setting and field work. So these differences are curious for me too in the methodological terms, yeah. Yeah. Feel free. Uh, thank you so much for your talk. Thank you. Thank you.